come with us now, if you dare, down a rickety staircase into a dank, dark basement. What awaits the Saturday Night Freak Show? <laughs> Thanks again for listening to the Saturday Night Freak Show podcast. If this is your first Saturday Night Freak Show podcast, then welcome aboard. We're a movie review podcast where we watch a movie every week that's chosen round robin, and we talk about it for your listening pleasure. Jesus Christ. <laughs> that was a throat punch. Uh, so who are these internet radio superstars? Holly. Michaela. Sean. And I'm Colin. And tonight we watched a movie that was chosen by... Sean. What did we watch tonight? Uh, we watched Lifetime Presents John Carpenter's <laughs> Village of the Damned. You know, <laughs> yeah, if you, if you told me, I wouldn't know otherwise. That's, you know? that's, that's what we watched tonight. Yeah, what year, year was this movie? 1995. And a public service announcement I Ooh. think is appropriate for listeners mm. out there. Probably. We watched this movie through uh, Amazon Prime. Oh, you're going to put them on blast, huh? Yeah. That's right. Well, they yeah. should. No, they should. Yeah. Well, they because should. I've noticed that this is happening with, like, HBO does this. A lot of, like, uh, TV channels are doing this now. Whenever there's a movie that was shot to 235 to 1 Cinemascope, they crop the fucking sides off of it and reformat it for right. your 16 by 9 TV. Mm-hmm. That's dumb. This is heresy. I agree. Especially with John Carpenter movies, because mm-hmm. famously, like everything that he shoots is a widescreen movie. Yeah. So everybody felt very close to the camera yeah, in this yeah. version that we watched. Very close. This to is the version that my dad wants to watch. Because every time we watch anything in widescreen, <laughs> bars. Every fucking time. Why isn't it the full screen? Why isn't it the whole screen? It's like, Dad, you're seeing that's, more. I, that's I, a I thing of that generation. It is. Because my he parents are like that, too. He thinks he's being cheated yeah. out of his large screen TV. Uh, that's yeah, the they they're yeah. like, why do I have a wide screen TV if I don't see exactly. the whole fucking thing? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So what's the next step, then? We make 235 to 1 TVs, and we just put bars on the side whenever there's a 16 by 9 image in it. That sounds horrible. That's horrible. That's horrible. That sounds absolutely no. horrible. No. Horrible. Dear uh-huh. Lord, that is hell. I thought we were past this. Once we got past the 4x3 well, TV when all those with the, die off, we'll be the super letterbox. <laughs> yeah. No, it's going back. It it was beat when they went to DVD and we were like, oh, and 16x9 TVs and we're going to have letterbox. And it's not as severe as it was on, you know, yeah. that everybody thought their picture tube yeah. was blowing out before. Mm-hmm. No, now we're going back to like everybody wants stuff formatted for their sixteen by nine TV. So I just rem- cut the just, sides off. It's, you guys remember okay. when they used to sell DVDs to where you had to read closely because the top would say full screen or widescreen? Yes. <laughs> okay. Yes. So my my mom. This is back when my brother was working at Circuit City. He was a manager there. My mom. Dear Lord. Yeah, back in the day. It's a slice of history, yeah. folks. Do you remember Circuit <laughs> City? <Yeah. laughs> my mom bought whatever the latest Harry Potter movie had to have been like the first or second one. It wasn't very deep in them. And she grabbed the widescreen on accident, and we. This is back when we had the tube TV still. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And she was so pissed that she had those fucking black bars cutting into her. Nothing worse than a widescreen movie and a tube TV. She yeah. returned an open DVD to Circuit City. Like that's a you can't return open DVDs. Right, but, but these are the same people no. who like when they first got their HD TVs would like uh, they'd render the four by three image yep. like stretched out, Stretch it so out. everybody yep. was squished or yep. yep. And they all oh, probably oh, have the God. motion smoothing on their TVs now too, so everything looks like so a fucking turn that opera. fucking yeah. shit yeah. off. Yeah. They just yeah. have everything looking terrible. <laughs> yep. It was worse. They you know I all have, the settings that shouldn't be on or on. Yeah, yeah. I've lost all consideration of people who don't know how to get it right. I'm just like uh, whatever. Yeah. Just, yeah, yeah. I don't care anymore. You're all this is how you wrong. like watching shit. Fine, go mm-hmm. ahead. I'm gonna watch it right and not yeah, be bothered like, by it. Yeah. But like, what if you're forced to watch something on that? You're just gonna like, you're not gonna say anything. You're just gonna let it slide. I make sure I'm not in that situation. Okay, all right, fair <laughs> enough. Fair he enough. doesn't watch do. anything at anybody else's house. No, unless it's uh, a it's calibrated display. Right, yeah. and the plan's yeah. been going great so far. <laughs> yeah. And if we get to that point, I'm like, give me your fucking remote. Right, yeah. We're fixing this now <laughs> because I'm not doing that shit. Because you, uh, if this shit comes up and you're just like, that's ob- this is obviously something is wrong mm-hmm. and we're yeah. gonna fix it now for yeah. your benefit yeah well, owner of this tv how people don't write because don't mine that, is but. fine and now we will fix it especially yours. like yeah. the motion smoothing is so obvious i don't understand yeah. how they don't see it like everything yeah. looks wrong to your yeah. eyes uh, ryan johnson for a while there led a resistance on twitter he's just like mm-hmm. we're fixing every tv let's do this now was yeah. he the guy who was going around like whenever he'd go over to oh, relatives yeah. house yeah fix he, yeah, yeah that was yeah mm-hmm. fixing yeah. all of them and everything yeah <laughs> Uh, okay, so this film is directed mm-hmm. by John Carpenter. Do we know how many movies 
This is into his filmography. Well, why don't you? Okay. It's pretty no, deep. Why don't you give me know how many it is from before the end. So I can find it's gotta be like out. what? Let me know you're gonna ask these questions. Three or four from the end, max, maybe. From the end, I think it's <laughs> two, two. What? Two thousand? Two thousand one was no, it vampires was three. from Mars. Yeah, vampires. Yeah. Then Ghosts of Mars. Then the Ward. Yep. Yeah. The board. And oh, the yeah. Masters of Horror, notwithstanding, because it's not a theatrical right. feature. So yeah, this is towards the end. This is towards mm-hmm. the end. Towards so Jesus. this don't comes say after. That makes it sound like he's dead. Well, well, he's not going to make another he, movie. Is he part, gonna, of yeah, him, say, part of him died. Part of him died. Okay, yeah. well, there it, it is. Uh, the, wow, this is right after In the Mouth of Madness. Yeah, yeah. Village mm-hmm. of the Damned, then Escape from L.A., my favorite. No. Oh, that comes after this? <laughs> wow. Yeah. Oh. Wow. Well, 96 wow. Vampires is 98, huh. then Ghosts of Mars 2001, Mass of Horrors. How does this movie look better than Escape War. from L.A.? <laughs> Escape from L.A., I think, was supposed to be like the, uh, that was his shot, again, in a major studio film. Yeah. And it all went to so many John Carpenter movies that we done. All right, Sean, are you leading up to Halloween by watching a bunch of John Carpenter related stuff? Sean's yes, last he is. Was the Thing remake from 2011? Ooh, I want to guess what's going to be plan? next. <laughs> what? His next movie is Halloween 2 from 1981. The TV cut. <laughs> yeah. All of you. Sacrilegion. We're watching the TV cut. Sacrilegion. We're going to watch the worst version of a good movie. <laughs> no, if we watch another Halloween movie, it wouldn't be John Carpenter. we watch Halloween 5. No. Just to put that no. in there for all of <laughs> Just to put that out there for well, all of I mean, of we've it, already yeah. watched a couple. We've all, watched yeah. all the worst ones yeah, already. Yeah, we've already we're watched getting them. better. <laughs> like, we're slowly getting better. Five is better than everything else we've watched so far. <laughs> Well, you should be uh, thanking me that we finally I mean, got to a quote unquote good uh, one. I I don't agree. I'd rather watch. I'd rather watch what was it? Resurrection was the last one. We yeah, watched. Rather watch I'd rather watch than that five? than five. Yeah, Ooh, I would. Really? Yeah. See, this oh is no, I'm, yeah, I'm the not kind of discussions I want to have yeah. Yeah. while we watch five. Uh, <laughs> um, so this uh, this movie is a John Carpenter film. Uh, mm. John Carpenter is one of the greatest living filmmakers of his generation. Mm-hmm. I'm You're not going to have any argument. Yeah. I was like, yeah. I was like, what, what are you getting at? <laughs> <laughs> okay, so where does that reputation he's come passionate from? Passionate about something? That Do you helps? see? Sure. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, that's he has to be. I was. Was there a story that this one? What was the maybe? Do you know the trivia part on of this? A contract. Uh, part of fulfilling a contract. So With he didn't have a lot of passion. Universal. For the movie before this was uh, you just said in, in the mouth of that was uh, New Line Cinema. Yep. And then the one before that was <laughs> Memoirs of an Invisible yes, Man. And that was like, I don't know who put that out. Was it Sony or something? Like that. Like no, that was Warner that. Brothers. Was it Warner Brothers? Yeah. He's all over the place. Okay. So he's fulfilling a contract to somebody we don't know, but it, there was some he kind of bait very, and switch, right? He said he right? wasn't very passionate about it. Right. You know, to be fair, he is a pretty honest man when it comes to that kind That's of stuff. He'll true. straight up tell you when he doesn't give a shit we about something. We can't fault him yeah. for it. Yeah. It's just like, hey, they paid me for it, yeah. so I did it. Yeah, yeah. Like, he'll be the Don't first blame to him. tell you, so you can't blame him for that. I'll so, give him all right. that. Bravo, mm-hmm. sir. Mm-hmm. So it is a remake yep. of a movie from 1960. 57. No, 60. The book was 57. The movie was 1960. Okay. Hmm. Based on a book called The Midwich Cuckoos. The Midwich Cuckoos. By John Wyndham. Who yep. also wrote Day of the Triffids. Anyone? Killer plants. Nope. No? I've heard of this. Nope. Oh, yeah. Sounds cool. There's a meteor shower, blinds everybody, and then these killer plants grow, and you can't see them, but they move around. Oh, yeah. Day of the Triffids. That helps if you can't see them. Mm-hmm. That's a, is that a movie or a book? Uh, both. It's a How movie, is that a good movie? miniseries. So- yeah. <laughs> Jesus. They really went to town on that one. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Uh, it's a British thing. The British all know about. It. If you're oh, listening for Britain, God, this is like part of your DNA. Is that his thing? Americans just, haven't heard. Is of that his thing? Trip. He just keeps cranking out books about things that come from space and like take over town, paralyze a town, and then do stuff. Like so well, yeah, far, when, I'm seeing when a theme. you got an idea, yeah. you just kind of you know you just keep trying it in different yeah, ways. Stick like with your winners. Like something this comes down <laughs> and takes over a small town. And <laughs> it's like the it's like that gag on Family Guy about Stephen King turning in his latest book. You guys seen that? The haunted lamp. Haunted. He like looks around the office. Yeah, <laughs> about right. Yeah, mm-hmm. it's true. Uh, and they're like Stephen. You're not even trying anymore. Is what his editor he's says. Like, yes, we'll sell millions. <laughs> well, he's got the yeah. Uh, have you guys seen the uh, original film? 
I have not. Clips. Never seen the whole thing. Nope. Okay. Well, I saw it, but I mean, it may as well be clips. I, I remember, right. you know, bits and pieces. I remember the brick wall, you know, that kind right. of stuff. Yeah, yeah. I've seen, yeah, I've seen certain things. I'm like, oh, this is all similar. And they pull yeah. things from that. There's also a sequel to that original movie. Children of the Damned, mm-hmm. which I have not seen. I have not seen either, but my buddy has seen it, and he told me about the ending today. Where they figured out a... Are we spoiling something? Yeah, we're going to spoil Children of the Damned from 1963. Well, maybe somebody want to see it. I'm going to spoil it. Be warned. Hit your 15-second button. <laughs> <laughs> so at the, at the end, they figure out a way to, like, communicate with the children and coexist and everything, but some dude, like, drops a pen and accidentally hits the button that says, kill all the children, and so they just shoot them all oh. at the end of that movie. So they pretty much have them lined up and shoot all of them. Okay. It's very, uh, huh. all so right. That's the ending bleak. of that movie. So oh, yeah. it's very bleak. <laughs> well, you're saying that this village Children of the Damned. Children die in all these movies, I'm pretty sure. Mm-hmm. That has something to do with kids. Yep. Village of the Damned. Yeah. Why don't you to tell the fine folks at home, like you're listening, <laughs> like, they're going, like, what are you talking about? They're killing kids in these movies? I know. My God. My God. So we're in Midwich, California in this movie, I think is what it is. What a right? fucking name for a town. Holy shit. Midwich. 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 Now, if that was like the countryside in England or something, I'd be like, all right. Because it was. it was. Yeah. yeah, it really yeah. was. It's yeah. in the book. This is yeah. all in like the UK and everything. Yeah. So now it's been it really relocated was. to Inverness, California, which is <laughs> yeah. John Carpenter's backyard, apparently, yeah. where it's where he shot the fog. But why not call it Midwich? You know, there it is. Because yeah. it... it that's a weird sounding. Like I don't buy that. Midwich. That's America. Midwich. I don't. No. I, bet, I like, think Colin loves that name. It probably would have a Y in it somewhere if it was in England. See, I buy it. It sounds like a crap town that you've never heard of. It sounds like a crap town in Oregon. It's like the yeah. shitty town right near Salem that nobody ever pays yeah. attention to. It's like it's like Midwich. It's like fucking it's San- like Middlesex. It's like Sandwich, yeah. Maryland. You know, it's like <laughs> Sandwich. Yeah, Sandwich. Which is which is also yeah. English. Yeah. But okay. But there should it be a Y in there too. So um, it's a, uh, yep. we're, we're we're setting a, a small town, a um, hamlet, a, ha- a small hamlet. Would, that is how it I is would a hamlet. It. it is a hamlet. It is a hamlet. <laughs> yeah, that experiences the movie's at, title would disagree with you, but okay. Well, I mean, villages are still. <laughs> vill- it's like Hamlet Village. It's like there's not big difference there. No, but the village slash hamlet. Uh, experiences a happening, I will say. Uh, to, <laughs> to don't use, compare it to a more exciting movie. <laughs> to use that word that's got a, you know, some things associated with it. Mm-hmm. But experiences an event where there's a blackout at 10 a.m. one random morning where everyone in the vicinity of Midwich just fucking passes out. Does this remind you of Under the Dome? Yes, very much so. Mm-hmm. I was thinking that. Especially yeah. when there was a, they found out where the line was where if you cross it, you get a few feet in and then you just pass out mm-hmm. so there's you know it's got parameters and whatnot. i like the way they just dry the draw the line on the street yeah oh yeah i'm like are there guys on the other side of this like is it a circular thing is it a dome does it go right. up does in it the go air? around are there does it go guys straight? flying like, overhead and you yeah, know we don't know their planes right if somebody flies a helicopter into this does it just crash that's what did that happen in the 60s version i don't know it seems to me like maybe there might have been aircraft well but I can't remember. It feels like that would have been a good thing. Or I'm, I'm glad they like been too expensive for this movie. Yeah, <laughs> might have been. I'm glad they tested it out though. Like that's that scene where they like tether a guy and send him across. That the was line. cool. Like yeah. that is cool because yeah. that's yeah. what I want. <laughs> yeah. If you establish that people on this side of the line are passing out and everything, I want mm-hmm. you to sh- shove a guy across and be like, let's see where he passes. Didn't it we yeah. see a scene no, almost back. exactly like that in the mist? <laughs> yes. Yeah. Only that guy doesn't come back with uh, all of his parts in. in time. Ooh. <laughs> oh, they He's literally tied on a rope and they send him out into the mist from the grocery store. Nice. Just like they did in the. In, Who, yeah. what, what idiot volunteered for that? Uh, I mean, the, the bravest store? man in the grocery the store. The stupidest <laughs> man in the grocery store. So, so like, nothing will take me out. Well, this uh, Midwich is populated by a cast of B movie superstars, which is one of the things that I think I remember the most about this movie yeah. Yeah. was the yeah. casting of ha- movie has beens. <laughs> In Mark uh, Hamill. <laughs> <laughs> oh, sad. Well, true. <laughs> At that point, I don't think Mark Hamill had been in a theatrical movie. Like, he was directed. Sleepwalkers. Video. Yeah. Was that before this? Yeah, I'm pretty sure it yeah. was. Yeah. So that was like so. late 80s, wasn't it? Sleepwalkers was 80s. Yeah. Was it? Yes. yes. 
we established this on the Sleepwalkers episode that we did. You should go back and listen to oh. it. Apparently, so should I. Uh, God, okay. It's like 92 with Sleepwalkers. Space armor. I remember him being in like, uh, time, not Time Cop. What was it? Time Crisis? Time something? Slipstream? Time I don't know. There was all these video. direct-to-video things. Uh, again, Guyver. Uh, well, Mark yeah. Hamill, he's not our lead, but he's in it. He's the local. Nor should he be. He is the local vicar. <laughs> He is, yes. Oh, we should bring back that term. <laughs> well, like we're going that. with Hamlet. In a Hamlet, uh, you have a vicar. vicar. He's got yeah. that full collar. <laughs> that man is a vicar. Uh huh. I like it. Uh, but our main protagonist is Christopher Reeve. Reeve. Mm. Mm. May he rest. In his well, in his uh, last role before his unfortunate accident, uh, which happened, uh, I believe, a month after this movie came oh, out. Yeah, it yeah. Came out in oh, April, sad. and in May he yeah. uh, had his equestrian accident. Yeah. Um, who else is in it? Michael Pere from Eddie and the Cruisers and Streets of Fire that's makes his you, triumphant That's return. who you go with next? Mm-hmm. I was going to say Christy Alley, but sure. Yeah. <laughs> yeah she, she deserves that to go before. I think so. Michael but, Pere but, was also in a movie I really like that's really hard to find called Bad Moon, a werewolf movie oh, from shit, the 80s. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. We did that on this. Yeah. On this, uh, You can go back and listen oh, to our Bad Moon. You did Bad Moon? We did Bad, Bad Moon. Moon. I'm pretty yeah. sure, didn't we? I don't think so. I was. Not I wasn't here. here. Listener, tell us if we I did bad. Now moon. I can't even remember <laughs> if we did it for the, the podcast. I don't recall seeing it in the archives, you like at have. all. Maybe it was. There's almost 300 Travis episodes Pick? to go yeah, through. Yeah, maybe knows? it got eaten. I don't know. Yeah. Maybe you're right. Mm-hmm. I remember watching that fucking. Th- I thought it? it was for. Yeah. Okay. The book is better in that it's case too. I remember talking about it when we did Dog Soldiers. Mm-hmm. Oh. All right then. There's a lot of werewolf movies, guys. As we're closing in on our 300th episode, yeah, it's like some of them are getting away from me. Um. So, uh, uh, Christopher Reeve is the doctor. Yes. Right. So that is, that's the position that gives him access to like all the stuff that's going on. Mm -hmm. Christy Alley is a government operative. Who is uh, also when this event goes down. Yes. And she's brought in, sent in by the government to investigate the strange happening. Yes. The Uh, black room government. Mm -hmm. (laughs) We'll call them (laughs) the shady. Apt to name. Yes. From the war room. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. Yeah, because there's always p- fucking people meeting in just like the dark rooms. Yeah. When it's we like say a dark rooms. room, we say like uh, they basically it, it's on a sound stage. Imagine a gigantic yeah. sound stage where they turned all the lights off except the overhead light on the conference room table, mm-hmm. and that's it. And that's it. Yeah. Enough to see the people. Yeah. That's yeah. All you need. It's like wow, that's cheap. Mm-hmm. But for a thirty second scene, that's all you need. Yeah, I suppose. We see. I, it, but- well, that's what John Carpenter says. Yeah. Like well, yeah. we don't all. The, we just need a table. Yeah. We'll be fine. I'm with John. And the actors. I suppose you need the actors. Um, So then there is also Linda Kozlowski. Yes. Kowalski. Kozlowski. Kozlowski. You're right. From Crocodile Dundee. Who hadn't been in a movie in a hot minute at the point in time. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Chrissy Ellie was kind of like in a lot. Look who's talking. Oh, yeah. She had done all three of those movies at this point. And Jesus. Yeah. So, I mean. I love those movies. You know, she was known. She was known. But she's she Kirstie can. Alley. Like, mm-hmm. everyone knows Kirstie Alley. Yeah. Fucking cheers, man. She's yeah, but the, universally the, like, known, I would say. What was the, oh, God, what was the Selleck movie we did that she was in? Runaway? Yes. Oh, like, that was way geez. earlier. Well, in she's her career, also that was back when she was in her prime. Yeah. 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 It was like, Christy, was that, did we establish that was before after? That was right before Cheers. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Mm-hmm. Um, prime Kirstie Alley. So, Linda Kozlowski <laughs> is from uh, Crocodile Dundee. Yes, yeah, she is. Okay. She done anything else? <laughs> I'm sorry. And that doesn't matter. <laughs> she, she's the lady from Crocodile Dundee. Yeah, she is. That's that's, that's it. it. That's she really. I mean, she really hasn't done anything else. No. I mean, she's done a few things here and there. And John Carpenter's Village of the Dam. That's really it. I was surprised when I did research this morning <laughs> that <laughs> she was in this movie. I was just like, holy shit, she is. Yeah. But she is indeed. And uh, then there's a uh, several John Carpenter mainstays, including Peter Jason and George Buckflower. That's a great name. Quote. Yeah. Buck I think here he's just Flower? Buck Flower, but in the other ones is George Buck Flower. In I was hoping his last name was Buck Flower. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> That's the best name in the world. Buck Flower. That guy got around, too, like because he's uh, famously the guy that Marty McFly kicks off the park bench yeah. at the end of Back to the Future 2. Well, he's in the first one. Well, he's yeah, in the first he's in the first one. one. In the second I think one. he's in the first and second one and not yeah. in anything else. Yeah, and Pumpkinhead, he's the dad. Yeah. And he's in a bunch of John Carpenter movies. Oh, I want to say. He is straight up Kentucky. He is. I want to say he's a dude in another movie, but I don't think that's it. Big business. Have you ever seen that movie? Nope. <laughs> 
Yes, but not for a long time. Now <laughs> with, long enough to know Bette if he's Midler. in it. Yes. <laughs> It's a good movie. Yeah, it it's is. a fun movie. <laughs> so, Miller and uh, I just Lily, didn't Lily expect you. To, yeah. I did not expect oh, you to pull movie. that one out. Oh so shit! I, I know like, what you're talking about. <laughs> yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah. I, I think Lily he's Tomlin. the the homeless twin who walks out of the. <laughs> I think I'm wrong. That guy is so typecast. But, I, but that would be if it was him. That would be great. Well, it has fucking, homeless in the title, so it might be him. You know, it might be. But if it was him, I'd be like, holy shit, that's awesome that he just keeps playing that character. Yeah, homeless. Bravo to this guy. Give him a bottle of whiskey and he's oh right, the, the, he's uh, they live is like probably everybody remembers him they live. Mm-hmm. Okay. I don't. Yep. Um, is that like? No, uh, am, am, am I? I don't know if anyone else knows this. Am I wrong? But I thought a brief second in the picnic before they all passed out. Did I see Stephen King? Did anyone else catch that? Mm. Nope. He was like right in front of the camera. I could have sworn. No. On my life that it was Stephen King. I was just I focused on Mark Hamill. Yeah, same. <laughs> I mean, that's he's pulling finger fair. paints. That's fair. He's pulling some faces need, in this movie. Oh my god, he's <laughs> desperate for those finger paints <laughs> at that point. Is Mark Hamill okay? I'm gonna no, ask a question he's not. that I've asked. I think of the big red one we did, and what else did we do? The Sleepwalkers. Yeah. Is he just he's a, a guy, terrible guy fucking right actor? He's he's a, a good voice actor. He's a really good voice actor. But he's a terrible actor because <laughs> every choice he makes is like, I'm not gonna be happy. I'm gonna be. He's just desperate and he, dour. And he just, overdoes it. He really is. He a, he's he's one of those guys actor. that, like, yeah, he's a, he's an actor where he never like becomes a character. He is always acting. You know, mm-hmm. it never he's feels always natural. This yeah. close to becoming Darth Vader. Yeah, like he's just yeah. this side of it. I know, I'm telling you, Empire Strikes Back is the best work that guy has ever done in his <laughs> I mean, fucking life. Well, yeah. maybe Last Jedi, he's very good in it. He so. is good in yeah, that. Yeah, that's true. That's true. He yeah. is good in yeah. that. Yeah. But that's that's where he lives, I think. Anything yeah. else outside of that, it's like, oh, I loved him in this. It's like, no, you didn't. Yeah. No. You're a liar. Yeah. He, Unless like, it's his voice acting. His voice acting. Yeah, that's acting. incredible, you know. Yeah, but, his, yeah. but his acting is, it's so extreme that it's, it's almost like uncomfortable. Mm-hmm. Like yeah. that, it is. Yeah, that scene in the church when he's like checking on the girl who's crying, he's so intensely. Let's just say Mark Hamill as a priest is uncomfortable. It's uncomfortable. <laughs> Let's just say that. Yes. I didn't appreciate I don't no. like it. I don't feel good about it. He's I so, won't ever. He's so intensely concerned. I'm like, Jesus Christ, you need to back the fuck off. Oh, like, that's right. Meredith Salinger is yeah. in this yes, movie. Yes, she is. Yes, she is. Yep. From the journey of Natty Gann. Yep, I'll and be tagging her in a I'm tweet sorry, later. what's the other movie <laughs> that she's done? <laughs> Didn't we watch a yeah, movie we with her not her. too long ago? I could have yep. swore we were to just talking about her. Because I may we have been getting yeah. her confused with uh, Feruza Balk at some oh, point when we watched uh, uh, Island of Dr. Moreau. Oh, well, now I need Maybe to know, uh, dear listener, your uh, uh, Feruza Balk or Meredith Salinger. I need to know what you think. Mm, I'm going with Meredith well. Salinger. I'm going with Meredith Salinger. Yeah. But I think she was in something. We oh, were talking about her. she's in Lake Placid. She's in Lake Placid. Oh. All right, then. She's married to Patton Oswalt. That's oh, that's, that's what, right. Uh, okay. Oh, my yeah. God. I forgot. That's very recent. Oh, yeah. yeah. I was going to say, is that a recent thing? Yeah. Yes. Like here. Because, yeah. I mean, yeah. 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 <laughs> no, it's very recent. All right. So what happens during this not blackout no, let me in just, this uh, film? say not to identify her as that. No. Yeah. That's but, not. But It's just a fact. It's just mm-hmm. a fact. I gotcha. She did marry Patton Oswalt. <laughs> Just say. Continue. So what happens during the slack? She does look like Feruza Balk. Oh. A she little does. bit. A little you bit. You guys are crazy. <laughs> no, she does. <laughs> because I was thinking the whole time, who does she look like? And Balk why is it bothering me? eyes. Uh, Maris Helen no. does not. No, I know because that's why she's the it's better the, Feruza like, Balk. She doesn't have the crazy. It's, it yeah. is. I think it's, it's probably. Yeah, she's got that yeah. same like yeah. jawline and cheekbones. You mm-hmm. know? Yeah. Very similar. Mm-hmm. So what happens during this blackout in this town? We're that's a significant. I know <laughs> the significant. The cows event. pass out, Colin. That that's is significant. significant. That made me yeah. uncomfortable because I was like, "These a bunch of for real dead cows right now that we're looking at." I'm just wondering if the cows got pregnant. That's what I was figuring you meant when you said that made you uncomfortable. Yeah, no, <laughs> no, I was just more. I'm like, I was yeah. pregnant right now. <laughs> I'm thinking from how they made this movie, Alien like, did they literally just drag oh a bunch of dead oh, cow bodies down on this field? You give them a shot. I think a lot of people were drugged at this during this scene. The dogs, <laughs> the, the dogs cows. were definitely drugged. They, they something always, happened. Yeah, they but they woke sleeping. up on cue. They did. Well, and the well, way the those dogs stumbled up. around, <laughs> there was that two dog dogs was there. Dead. One of only one woke up. I'm right. just saying. 
he's a, he's a he but you saw the other dog. one up while you're on later but true. you didn't see him actually true. get up with but this yeah. is true but like yeah. the way that yeah, dog, dog stumbled like up he was waking yeah. up it's just like holy shit like he was coming out of anesthesia yeah. Yeah. he's a better the actor than mark hamill i'm just saying yes that golden retriever this is true very much so i want to get back to the um the the cow alien babies that's the that's the sequel i want the cow alien babies yeah all right i want that sequel that's like let's do that alien three where you have dog, yeah, aliens, right. dog yeah. aliens and whatnot. Yeah. Oh, There's a true. cow alien in the director's cut. There is! <laughs> that's very <laughs> true. It was a cow alien. Yep. Jesus, how long <laughs> is that version? It's uh, three, three hours. It's a three oh, hours God, long. No. <laughs> it's a three hour long movie. Yeah. It's interesting, but it's a three hour long movie. Mm-hmm. Mm. So, uh, Michael Pere in his big comeback role uh, dies. <laughs> dies. In a horrible, because he falls asleep coming back into the town. Right, he drives Boom. in over the line. <laughs> He's dead. But all the women in the town. Well, ten of the women. Ten of the women yeah. in the town. Because there's like all. there's like seventy people at that town meeting, but there's only like what like six or seven kids in this movie, yeah, right? That's yeah. I was no, like, there's there's uh nine. I think there's right because there's yeah, four, four and one to four yeah. and one and one dies. So yeah. there should have been ten kids. There's nine. But there's a lot of people in that town meeting where they're very all upset, upset over everyone there's else's a lot. problems that they don't yeah. have anything to deal with. Yeah. yeah. Because this is a state of emergency, right? If all you all the, if ten of the women get pregnant, we say it was ten. Yeah, ten of the women get pregnant. All of a sudden, during a blackout, what's going on? I think because yeah. clearly that was an emergency. I th- yeah, I something. think it's just like general panic. Like I think so. If I mean, if that happened to us, would be like, what the fuck? Is right. This, like, yeah. I'd be at a town meeting, going, hey, what's yeah. going on? Yeah, I'd like to know. This is what back when aliens can impregnate people just with like the space ray. Yeah. Invisible space I don't think ray. anybody ever showed up on this planet. No. Mm-mm. Space ray. Yeah, those are the good old days. Yeah. I think it's like a spore situation. Space the space ray. It's like spores. Spore situation. Uh, yeah. Spore. <laughs> this, yeah. Instead of super sperm, it was super yeah, spores. Yeah. Well, yeah, they gotcha. did say super sperm in this movie, yeah. didn't they? Yeah. Ooh. They did. They did. <laughs> they did indeed. I was just thinking, you know, like that like whispering kind of like fog cloud at the beginning. Yes. That's like spores yeah. coming in and settling on everybody. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I also oh, like yeah. the way that these. <laughs> Listener, you couldn't see it, but I was doing the hand motions. Oh, she's <laughs> all I was doing. Uh, cloud of sperm. Stop. Well, I like the way that these aliens are conscientious enough. Conscientious. Conscientious Ooh, enough that uh, they send the spore cloud back to Earth yeah. uh, to implant uh, positive dreams in the mother's uh, are mind. Are they positive? Well, they imagine themselves they standing in like a, gold, a golden glowing light, like feeling their baby bump and raising their hands to the sky. Like yeah, one no, of the no, most I, awkward I fucking it's, insert it's, shots. It's horrible. I don't it's like think weird it's, cult footage. Is yeah, what it felt I don't think like I don't think it's positive. I think it's brainwashing. Well, that's what I'm saying. But it, that's not positive. They're seeing it as a. They're having positive But they're being brainwashed to think it's positive, yeah. is what he's saying. So they're like, I want to keep my baby now instead of aborting it. Yeah. Right, which is why they all end up, that's a very good point, because they all end up keeping their babies. But, mm-hmm. but, but when, she's like, when babies. she's like jarred awake, she doesn't seem like she's happy about it. She seems really disturbed. Well, that's mm-hmm. the initial uh, shock of having this thought. It's like, I it's like what? Because I, I was going to abort my baby, and it, well, whatever. Mm-hmm, I guess. So <laughs> we'll give it up for adoption. They do uh, birth these creatures. Yeah, you get a lot of money for doing it too. If you let your kid be tested, yeah. fuck yeah, I'd be doing this. And one dad was very happy about yeah. that. Three thousand dollars a month plus all your medical p- fees paid that's for. A, that's a good chunk of money. Yeah, it is. <laughs> take that. Especially because he's got two women in the household. Yeah, that's per pregnant person. Yeah. 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 I know. So the government's like, you know, hey, we're gonna we're gonna set you up. kid. Up to you. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So how far worth into the being movie, in a family that's having a kid? Yes. <laughs> how far into the movie are we at this point? Ten minutes. Yeah. No. Not no. 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 no this is like an like hour and a half. It it's been a while. This yeah. is like forty minutes. I would say it's a long time dealing with the minutia of like. This is a drama. Yeah, <laughs> this is where you're getting the lifetime <laughs> thing from. This, yeah, it yeah. is like a lifetime. Yeah, this drama. this movie's an ordeal. There is a, there is a, a what? <laughs> it's an ordeal. <laughs> I thought it's an Oreo. I'm like, how does that work? <laughs> <laughs> there was a moment where there was a pan over to a sky and then a slight insert of a child's face. Oh yeah, 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 floating his like, yeah. yeah. like this the is a lifetime close. movie. Yeah. Uh, Holy shit! I know that's why it's like, what the fuck happened to John Carpenter? Right? I mean, you know, really this not is a guy about doing this movie. 
But his you know, assistants directed this, and he just was supervising shit or something. Like he's just in his chair. You're doing yeah, great. whatever. You're doing great you're doing job. Great. Yep, yep. <laughs> Turn it know, in. Just, call it you a don't day. just try and go above and beyond and use your John Carpenter brain to do anything extra special to make it memorable. You just like the basics are good enough because every filmmaker has what makes them a filmmaker. Whatever makes John Carpenter John, John Carpenter. Uh, d- um, David Fincher, David Fincher, but they also have those basic skills of filmmaking. They can just fall back on, and just do that. And at a certain point, I think you know John Carpenter just fell back on that and did it for this movie. Yeah, because it's like it's a technically proficient sure. movie, but there's no like real identifiable style nope. to it. But mm-hmm. that's almost like I mean, as his career went on, it seemed like that kind of stuff. Fell the away. Fact that, the fact that there was no identifiable thing for it was his identifiable thing for it, as far as being <laughs> John Carpenter. There was a point where we were watching this, was like, I was like, is Sean sure this isn't a mini series, and we're watching like both parts of yes. the TV mini series? Because right now feel it feels like, like, like it could have been. I yeah. had the same feeling when we watched the TV version of it. That's well, but that, I had that, same, that is a mini series, yeah. though. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, I like, had that. I had that like, same yeah. feeling. Oh. Well, it's it's. I mean, I think a lot of that, uh, you know, impressions. Like, I, I, it's hard to nail this down, but there's something about the quality of the photography. Mm-hmm. You know, looks like a TV movie. It does. It does. it does. it does. But I'm like, is it just because everything is all really well lit, or it's just lit in that TV kind of style? There's no shadows on anything yeah. ever. It's like everybody is always in focus. The backgrounds are always in focus. It's just that kind of like, this is how you light stuff. Yeah. You know, kind of lighting. And that's his uh, Gary Kibb, I think, is his cinematographer that he started working with, I think, in around the time of like, he may have did uh, Prince of Darkness and they live in like every, I think, every subsequent movie. Yeah. Uh, After Dean Cundy, like, got, you know, moved up to the big leagues and did Back to the Future and started working for Spielberg and Zemeckis and all, you know. Uh, but yeah, a lot of early John Carpenter stuff like has a distinctly what we think of of as a John Carpenter style, which is Dean Cundy, and because of Dean Cundy. But yeah. strangely, I don't know. I I can't remember if I was telling but, you guys this. I watched a Dean Cundy right. shot have saw, movie. Have you done Dean Cundy stuff without yes. John Carpenter? Yes. Uh, I How's watched something. Work? It was from like the mid late seventies, early eighties, and it was a, about a killer snake. I think it was called like Jaws of Satan or something like that. And it was shot by. John Carpenter, or Dean Cundy. It was on a pick next week. It was on a double disc (laughs) with like Empire the Ants or something like that. And uh, (laughs) there it is. And it, it, you could not tell, like, there's no Dean Cundy style. Yeah. Although The Witch Who Came In from the Sea looks like a Dean Cundy movie. It's fucking weird. I think he, he just needs to be paired with a good director, period. Not necessarily Carpenter, because he has done good stuff outside of Carpenter. That guy's yeah, worked but, on fucking iconic movies across all genres. But do you think, like, those movies, do they have a distinctly Dean Cundy style? Like, Back to the Future, or... I mean, Jurassic that feels Park? like... But that feels like a Spielberg movie. Like, the way yeah. that shots well, that's come what I'm saying. together... I think he's best when he's paired with someone that has auteurship. I think once you, like, yeah, you know, whatever movie you're talking about, that's not going to be a director that has any auteurship. So, if the director doesn't give a fuck, why does he... You know, well, I think it's more that so who, who am I like, working with sort of thing. So then I guess what you're saying is the the pairing of of Cundy and Carpenter created like a third person who's not there anymore because the yeah. two of them. Yeah, aren't working. exactly. I would agree. That seems yeah. like an accurate you know description of what they created. Yeah. And I think he, you create that third person um, when, like the, when, you, when Cundy is, is teamed up with other people. The Coen like brothers have only had one cinematographer for their whole career. You know, Roger Deakins is the only person they've ever worked with. They clearly mm-hmm. like have a understanding with him. Yeah, mm-hmm. and they kind of adhere yeah. to each other's yeah, styles exactly. and become this entity. Mm-hmm. Yeah, right, right. Well, um, <laughs> <laughs> we shall continue <laughs> <we shall, laughs> <we shall, laughs> the Cundy conversation <laughs> later. Well, something happened to you know. I mean, it's like John Carpenter is one of my favorite. Has always been like one of my favorite directors. But I think some of that might be because, like, uh, well, you know, he's had help. Well, the, when the I became yeah, aware of like who a director was and what they did, like his stuff resonated more with me so like that's why it's like he's always been like he's one of the great you know working directors but if you look at his later day stuff and i think this is right there in that period yeah. where it's like i'm i don't really see the john carpenter I in, right yeah, I not agree. at all I don't see it at no. all in this movie no except that you have his score 
<laughs> yeah, but even you, that. <laughs> you have a score, and you have maybe certain elements to it, but it doesn't feel like a full-on John Carpenter-like thing going on here. Because it seems like he was, uh, was he indulging? Because he did the score for this movie, or he was associated with the score of this movie. No, he but did it is it, yeah. like, there is a, there's a lot of strumming, as we know. A lot of strumming. It's bad. Yeah. A lot of strumming. But it, it feels. Because that's country. And it, but it feels, I mean, I don't know, it feels part and parcel with the, what this movie is at the beginning. I don't know. It, maybe it could have, it could have done better, I think, with a little more, like, Maybe more intense score because it does a little more feeling. I th- it does. I, th- I feel it does kind of meander <laughs> and just kind of become nothing yeah. in this movie. Like uh, something a little more with a little more direction maybe would have helped this movie. Yeah, like a little more purpose in the mm-hmm. score. Maybe maybe would have done a little bit more. I, don't I know. do like his the March of the Children theme yeah. or whatever that you know because there, there's actually a melody there. Right. But uh, and I mean the, I he does do some like doing. kind of tense stuff toward the end, which I thought was like, huh, I actually feel a little tense during this scene yeah. because yeah. of the music and not really what's mm-hmm. actually yeah. happening. But it uh, did think, it did pick up at the end. I think it John did. Carpenter really looked forward to the end of this movie. I, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think he did too. Take from that what you will. I think he did think too. That is what he looked forward to in this movie. Pretty this, sure. But like, if you like focus in on the score of this movie when you're watching it you'll notice how lazy and bad it is. You know what I'm saying? Like, you'll notice it's... Like, what they're doing on the guitar is, like, the equivalent of, like, chopsticks on the piano. It you know, like it is, like, break and the like, laziest yeah. shit ever. Like, hey, it, what can we do? It's yeah. Like, well, I got a guitar. Yep. Yeah. I, I, I said it while we were talking... Or while we were talking during the movie. If, if you've ever been to a church and you... That's like towards the end of the service, and there's someone just like quietly playing behind the pastor while he's talking. That's exactly what this was, like exactly. It's just the benediction. Like, music. It's, exa- it's just <laughs> the most depressing music. Ever. It's just nothing music. Yeah, yeah. It's exactly what it Church is. Church music. Yeah, it is. That's exactly what it is. Um. Well, that's. A, I mean, like you know, I don't recall the theme to vampires. To be honest with you, I mean, like uh, it used to be. Up. Like you can hear. Assault on Precinct 13, probably, or Escape from New York, or Halloween, or The Thing, even if it's any more county. Marconi, you know, Marconi. but even, like, when you hear Starman, you're like, I know it, recognize even, Starman. There's even a little Marconi in this movie. Like yeah, toward there's, the there's, end. There's a, there's a beat, doing the, and there's, there's a heartbeat in this movie, yeah. in the score, a little bit. Well, that's always been John Carpenter. Right, I think yeah. that was Marconi doing Carpenter right. in The Thing. What, yeah, what he wants, yeah. I would yeah. Agree. But it came through a little bit in this movie. Well... It's no surprise, listener, that uh, these uh, alien babies all grow up to mm-hmm. be alien kids. Real quick. They're like straight up five year olds. Like, right. I yeah, wondered if no the time years at all. had passed. Or years if, have passed. Yeah. Or, well, but there's no yeah. indication of that, though. Or if like, there had been an accelerated growth process because they were special children. That's what I assumed. Because, I mean, well, once again, this might just be the way the film was made. But when all the kids are getting like christened in the church, yeah. that one baby was straight That's up. That's a like, big yeah. baby. Uh, <laughs> but like <laughs> that had baby. to have been like almost a two year old dressed up like a new yeah. newborn. That like, thing's in, got in fucking all fairness, legs. In all fairness, christenings do happen fairly a, le- a good length after yeah. you've had your I think that was but, like, the passage were, of time. But within the first year? Yeah. It, about a year. Okay, that yeah. was a two-year-old baby. That, that baby was as big <laughs> as the woman was, holding it. Was it. Big yeah. That's a big, big baby. baby. Yeah. That's a giant it baby. It was a big baby. That I think there was a couple parts where they did mention like things like, well, over the years, like in referring to mm-hmm. bringing up the children. Yeah. So they did make mention of it briefly. That yeah. not, and I needed more. I needed a, a Chiron that said five years later or some bullshit think, like that. You know. I think the the scene we were talking about in the war room with Christy Alley, yeah. like talking. I think yeah. that was your like you know that, that was, was the we're gonna have to keep an eye on these children. Yeah. Fade out. Fade up to present day yeah. or whatever. So right. these kids needed, had never fucked shit up in that five years? In Kirstie Alley's hair. That's what I needed. <laughs> That's what I needed in no time yeah. had Yeah. Like she'd been doing this shit for a little bit. That's what I wanted. Well, the uh, kids possess a special power. Several special yeah. power? At least a, a special power. So they waited till they were like five or six to exercise any of this? I think they were all developing it as they were children talking to each other. Be- and whatnot. No, because... They seemed uh, pretty advanced, though, at like five, six years old. Oh, yeah. You know when, like, they were when they like, tubes, yeah. the name out in blocks right. and shit. 
And but I'm saying, like, the they didn't girl, have any malevolent tendencies until five or six. No, like, the little nothing. girl forces her mother to put her hand in the stock right. pot when, and, and then, I think and she that's was the one at, at two and then, or three and then kill her to jump off a cliff. Yeah. yeah. And, they, and yeah, that they, was when they were still yeah. babies, right? Yeah, two or three. yeah they were like she toddlers. Was, yeah, yeah. Was like three. Yeah. This was like boil hand, and then three months later, jump off a cliff. Yeah, yeah. And then we cut to five years later yeah. or whatever. Okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and they and they did establish that they've known for a little while that they could read their minds. Right. This is once yeah. they jump to them marching around in pairs and shit. They're just yeah. like, yeah, they have powers. Uh, they can read our minds, and there's a whole yeah. thing. And they, there's already a sense of. Uh, uh, of dread and resignation among the parents at this point mm-hmm. so, in what? the story about yeah. like we well, yeah. what can we do they 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 are in charge of what they're doing mm-hmm. is kind of the feeling over the town at this point mm-hmm. why do we not get any characters that are expressing that regret and like we should have done the abortion like really taking that chance to like express some serious emotion and be like I really fucked up. Yeah. Uh, no one know. feels anything in this movie think, at all. I think they're at an age where they've gotten past that. Because I think we're we're there. I but think if you're constantly living in fear that your alien baby can read your mind and right. can control you, uh, well, I think there is. There's so no getting out to, of that. I think they're so used to that at this point. I think we've come to a point where they're so used to what these kids are able to do and everything. Like that's how far we've gone into. That's not interesting as a movie. I, know, but the, I think they set that up with uh, it's the scene where Christopher Reeve talks where he like catches uh, you know uh, Linda Kozlowski coming down the street and. They have a dialogue, and right. that's basically like, you know, you should teach them. I'm yeah. like, what can I do? Oh, yeah. What can I do? You know, it's like, it's his the... wife killed herself, and he doesn't give a fuck. Like, he had no emotion about his wife I, killing uh, that's him. That's, that's a bottom for that. For that. He, like, that's a character hitting bottom, I think. It's like, what can we do? No, I mean, like, even from the moment she killed herself onward in the movie, he has no emotion about it. Well, he does not f- give a fuck. It's five years later. Yeah, but he's because he's a broken man at that point. Yeah. He, I think he resents his daughter. But we don't see him have a big over so. the top moment. Like we just see him like look out on the cliff and like scream and freak out, and then that's it. We cut away to five years later. Like I think we've passed the big over the top moment. I but we should be the, seeing that because that's the interesting part of the movie. I, well, I'm not. I'm not saying <laughs> where this movie is interested in showing us the interesting yeah. parts of the movie. I'm just yeah. saying this movie has decided to move past. It's those skipping movies. past all the emotional beats these characters should be having to show us them being over it. On the on the flip side of that, why why is the uh, the young woman that had the the stillbirth? Why is she still so upset? She sees how horrible these yeah, children this is are. Like five years Sh- later, shouldn't she? I, she, be, she should be going. Thank God. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> That's exactly what I mean. I'm this, drinking to celebrate. Why isn't she Woo! relieved? She well, should be. Why isn't she moving the fuck is, out of this town? Yes. Yeah. Why does everybody not stay a, there? Not a real parent. In no, five not years. Not a real parent. No. Yeah. I don't know. There's, uh, well, I mean, this this section of the movie brings in a lot of uh, questions, I think. Uh, you know, because the idea that not only do the children, they can read minds of the adults, which always, when characters can read minds in movies, usually they fuck it up. And I think this movie fucks it up where, like, well, they should be able to know this. The thing that's going on right now because they can read minds, right. but they only seem to be able to read minds when it's convenient to the plot. Yeah, um, but they are still children, and they're developing these. Yeah, but abilities. then it sets up that they're Ill, you know they're completely the run by right. logic, and you know they have no feeling, mm-hmm. but they do have emotion. They have anger. They feel angry right. all the time when when they're slighted by uh, a human. Right. For right. out of the most you know little misdemeanor, right. they were like kill them. Why one developed and not the other ones doesn't make sense. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. If you're going to develop one, I think natural progression would say you would de- at least develop some other ones as well. Also, are there no other kids in this town? No. Good question. Mm-hmm. They, well, well no, they, they, they do mention it because they mention them being in school with right, the other they just children. Don't show but we don't ever show them. them. Yeah, the they movie don't ever has show no them. interest in showing them. Uh, yeah. They're they at the them. fair at the beginning because they need the finger paints. Yeah, but that's like, but five years later when we jump ahead, there's no yeah. other fucking kids in the town except yeah. for these alien babies. Everybody's trying to keep them safe from yeah, the alien we babies. Well, separate but equal going on, huh? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. These white children. They have very They're platinum. Very they have platinum blonde <laughs> hair. Like very hair, white yes. children, and they apparently like to dress themselves like they are in 1950. The, the children have decided to dress themselves. Gray wool, not, yeah. definitely yeah, not gray, a choice. White yeah. and 
well, I was going to say black, but no, it's like no, it's two like different gray shades white, of gray, gray and white. And white. Yeah. yeah. Is their thing because this is the iconic look of these people in the 1950s, 60s movie. Yeah. And so they're doing it again now, Which even though it's literally like, black and white, but it doesn't look right. <laughs> yeah, but no, whatever. And their eyes this time are augmented by uh, industrial light and magic. So yeah. they glow in different colors that we could Multiple discern different colors. if they were mm-hmm. like, you know, this is the kill color. This right. is the I'm right. reading this your mind the color. Ring of eyes going <laughs> yeah. here. But we're trying to it doesn't, out what they mean. It's not associated with anything, as far as we can tell. Well, we know. Uh, all right, let's try and figure this out. We when they're know angry, that, to, they turn red. Well, they turn red, and then when they're going, like you said, when there is exertion of their powers, they turn white, and then they go beyond that, and then their faces start turning. You know, uh, you see the alien beneath. It's like when you hold a flashlight to your fist. You yeah, know, yeah. The yeah. Inside, that feels like what's going on with their faces mm-hmm. when their eyes turn white. So that's I the figure that would have shown up when they went in for their medical exams every couple months, but whatever. I mean, Always the eye exams. It did yeah. for the eye exams and everything. Uh, it feels like uh, green is like using a power, but you don't know if it's uh, for. They're just using a power. If not necessarily good or evil, obviously the red is obviously green. Is like they're bang. warming up. <laughs> it feels like it is. It's just like yeah. I'm just. Exerting control over someone, so it's green. I'm using a power, so the color is green. I'm spitballing here. Yeah, because we I turn know. yellow at some point, I'm just like, yeah. what does that it's mean? Like, well, just for the hell of it. All right, but the other thing that they do, the other part of the power that I always have problems with in movies, but Slither actually did it pretty well, was the the hive, the hive mind. mind. Yeah. Because whenever you have, so now they can read your mind. Well, they can read everybody's minds. Obviously, they would all be connected to read each other's minds. Right. But the movie, again, plays fast and loose with that because every time you have a fucking hive mind in a movie, you have to designate your leader, yep. which kind of defeats the idea of a hive mind. It's the Borg. Which is why the communism never works, right? You always have to have a leader, <laughs> even though everybody's supposed to be the same. Right. We have communism. <laughs> Who's going to take us where we need to yeah. communism? We have to have the great leader. We can't have a leader. Well, this movie flips the gender on the, because uh, in the original, it was, I think David was the leader. Yeah. In this one, it flips it to Mara, which is uh, uh, Christopher Reeve's daughter. Yes. I think they should have flipped the gender of the parent. They should have the left mother? the kid, a uh, boy, and chained, and made this movie about a mother who, you know, gave birth to an alien kid. I think there's where your drama is. I think it's less dramatic when it's the dad trying to figure out, like, how do we stop the aliens? It's like the mothers have more of a connection. Sure. Especially because that's not his kid. He don't give a fuck. Like, Mars right, kid. yeah, yeah. Well, that's what, that's what I'm saying. Oh, that's, only yeah. by the sense that his wife gave birth to that kid. Very that true. biologically is not his fucking. His kid. wife would have so, had more of yeah. a, a stake Very in true. this. Yeah. That yeah. would have yeah. been better. Mm-hmm. That would have yeah. been better. And, 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 and as soon as she died, yeah. he could have been like, "Fuck you, bitch, get out of here." You know, like yeah. he could have just. Yeah, he should have honestly. And they like, and they were kind of halfway there with Crocodile Dundee and David. You right, know, they, they were yeah, they were trying. Yeah, like they had the it was like the B story idea of yeah. what should have been the A story of this. But exactly. Yes. Yeah. Well, the B story you're saying is basically there's one of the kids who isn't a hive minder, or he's well, at he least is. developing some one of the kind uh, of one empathy. of the alien children yeah. is still born. <clears throat> near the beginning of the movie from Meredith Salinger. Mm-hmm. Her child is still born and taken uh, uh, discreetly away by Kirstie Alley and mm-hmm. placed in a basement for years. A leaky basement. A leaky basement. <laughs> where it's no, other, the, no basement is not The leaky. alien uh, stasis tube. Right. The, mm-hmm. they that looks these, so bad. Like, is this something you get on Etsy where it's just labeled the alien stasis alien tube? Stasis they're tube. all the same. Yeah. <laughs> it's the one It's like an aquarium. Tube. It's got some bubbles yeah. like floating up. Yeah. yeah, and it's always staring at you. Like that thing never like floats mm-hmm. around yeah. and you no. just see its ass looking at you. Yeah. It's always looking right at you yeah. when you go look at it. The water is always crystal clear. Yeah. And it's this, it's an alien creature that Sean said looked like the babies of the aliens from Independence Day. It really does. It does. It does. I, I was thinking it looked like the Night of the Creeps aliens at the beginning. It does. Yeah, it you're right. Does. It, it yeah. looks like those. It totally so does. The little baby yeah. alien. Yeah. Yeah. It yeah. totally does. There's yeah. a, well, I mean, there is a, there is, if, uh, if you're looking, the alien look, I mean, everyone incorporates that, I think, at some point. Like, it's the, the, the kind of the... The triangle head. head. The triangle head. <laughs> yeah. The wide eyes, the mouth, and the nose, and everything. So yeah. there's certain elements people take for I that. I was bothered by its its fingers and its toes. Uh, well, a I lot. think you're supposed to be, but also I was too. It and looked like lazy modeling, though. It had growing out of its chest. Didn't notice that. It had like a lie. thing. There was It was coming out. 
Nope. Did I was, it was directed a female by the alien, hand? Nothing. Okay. I noticed nothing. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> I know it had two only one. It's a two D movie, so that's why we didn't see it. If it was three dimensional, you wouldn't have noticed. We would that get smacked in the face with an alien penis. Is what you're saying? <laughs> there was some kind. It was the umbilical cord. Never. Mind. It was. Jesus. <laughs> yeah. I was gonna say, did you not look down a little further? Because it was a girl. I did. I, yeah, I, I was, it was very yeah. much a girl. Oh no! I, I, I was distracted by the fact that the the fingers on one hand were much shorter yeah. than the fingers on the other hand. But it, also, it's creepy because it's like those alien hands but one didn't one made it and one didn't yeah like <laughs> it was a good like fucking... three inches difference between the fingers yeah. on one That's, hand to the I other like, I like that idea cause it's like, you but know, why what's the point what of I have that? a question but, yeah. why yeah. does that why does that one look like an alien thank you that yeah. was what I wanted to bring up because yeah. it didn't yes. do well in the in being impregnated with a human so these, these, so it didn't kids take, all started and that's like why that? it was stillborn and looked like an alien. Is that what you're saying? It didn't take. So yeah. then it still that, continued to okay. grow yes. into. Does that not make sense? No, I wanted you to clarify. But Thank you. Yes, Thank it, you. It, like it Thank didn't you. take. Okay. And so you give birth. You know, if if it's because she was a virgin. If fucking Gia Davis can <gasps> give birth to a slug, I bet it is. I bet I don't that's why. See how, but okay. Okay. Well, I mean, there's I that. Know. There's <laughs> that point. <laughs> there's that point in like the. I don't. Okay. No, don't say things just because. <laughs> no, I want some reasoning to back it up. But there's that point in like gestation where all mammals look exactly the same. You know what I'm saying? Like, there's that point where like a human fetus looks the same as like a horse and a dog. Like, you know, very early on, they all look the same, and then that's where they split off. So I'm assuming that's where that yeah, one is yeah. at, and it's stage yeah. and some kind of genetic that's a defect. lot of homework I had to do to yeah. get to that the, point the, though yeah, the, the uh, fertilization rate didn't do so well right yeah it didn't one. take on her I, yeah. I, I mean it makes sense to me I don't know if it, to anybody else but I, like it didn't make it so far along as the other one so it ends up looking like where it came from technically. but do they do do like the alien kids recognize that then as, I think so yeah they, they know what they are they even say that yeah but do you know what you looked like as a fetus like but these are no, but, smart yeah, kids, somehow though. she, yeah. the Mora, seems to know that like that they have an alien countenance she to them t- somewhere. She says it to Christopher Reeve. She's like, you know what we are, and Christopher Reeve's like, yeah, yeah. Which I suppose you could read as like you just know we're of alien origin, but like yeah. obviously, and I think at that point in the movie, everyone knows what's going on. I think everybody like, knows what every, what's going on all the way it's through. It's been the like five movie. or six it's years of this shit. Minute. I think everybody's yeah. up to speed at this point. <laughs> yeah. Right. Well. Uh, we have, uh, so basically the, the alien kids are committing wanton murder all over the fucking, why uh, is this not an international story across the world? It is. We have, well, well, there should be more like, but it feels like we got over the story and we're just ignoring it at this point. There should be like reporters. There should be, there already Uh, should be scientists and everyone like Mm -hmm. these kids should not be left alone. There shouldn't be just Kirstie Alley is what you're saying. There shouldn't be. There should be like a whole shitload of platoon of people. people. Yeah. Yeah. For people who can control people's minds and talk to them and everything. I believe Mm -hmm. as far as, yeah, as far as like the, the news stories, like I believe that it's government contained. Sure. But why aren't they there? There should be. That's what. But yeah, everybody. There. Yeah. You know, speaking of fucking ET tent. I agree. I agree. I was, I was, I agree. I agree. I was yeah. gonna say, speaking of under the dome, fucking drop a dome on this city. They yes, need it. Something. You know, they, they yeah. yeah. You don't want yes. them leaving. I yeah, know, that's yeah. Thing. This should be it's a like, eh, just especially like if they know about the other kids and everything. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And you know what they can do? Fuck it. Drop some sort of containment on these kids. Mm-hmm. Yes. This should be a bigger and, thing than what it is. And back to what you said earlier. Why hasn't every goddamn person left this town? Mm-hmm. Left. Why? Gone. Because it, the the whole cycle of, like, if nothing else, they should be looking at the news stories and everything. Like, they should realize what's going on. Everyone should be gone. Yeah. 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 Everyone should be gone. This should be a desperation. And I think, and maybe, maybe the filmmakers are trying to get that across. Because there maybe. is a small montage of the town that makes it look like shit went wrong. Like, they're showing buildings and abandoned cars and stuff that's kind of run down. It feels like they've... And this is later on in the movie. Did they? They did. did. I totally miss that. They did. It feels like they did. It yeah, feels I missed like that there too. There was a uh, like a. I know they they downfall of this town. Later I remember on. they did it earlier on when everyone passed out, no, showing they did like this the repercussions. Later on where there was a slight. I missed that. Where they did all this, this is what stuff. before the mob forms or whatever. Or? I think so. Yes. Oh, the mob. Yeah, I there's a mob the shows mob. up that and the kids kill like them, and then there's the military and the kids kill them. Where there's writing on the truck, no one for hire. 
Do you remember that? No, um, nope. They, they didn't all, see that. Yeah, all, there's, a, there's a whole thing where it feels like the town has kind of fallen down. Wow. Mm. I believe you, but I just missed it. Right. Yeah. They, yeah. They do that whole thing. And I don't know if they're trying to like make this look like, you know, they've fallen into disarray since yeah. all this has happened. It yeah. felt like it at that point. Um, I don't know if it gets across to everyone, mm-hmm. but it, it kind of felt like that's what they were trying to do. Okay. I don't know if they were successful in that. That's what I got. Well, okay, in the yeah. other the other towns uh, worldwide where this right. has happened, uh, all the other governments have like nuked them or something. Yeah, they Wiped nuked them the out. parents and the kids because yep. they couldn't alert the parents without uh, telling the kids what were going on. Right, because they would know. Uh, it's funny that they mentioned like there's there's a city of like thirty kids and they get wiped out. I think the original movie is there's thirty the, uh, thirty kids and like the oh UK, okay so yeah it feels like they're kind of connecting like it a back. throwback like, yeah they're like. The first movie was over there. Yeah. Mm. This is happening at the same time. Right. Which okay. Is, even though it's yeah, identical, you know, because they both end up with somebody tr- visualizing sure, a brick yeah. wall at the end. Well, there's only so many ideas, Colin. <laughs> well, the uh, the uh, the uh, Christopher Reeve character, yes. who does become like the teacher of the kids out mm-hmm. in a remote barn because nobody else wants to steal them. Uh, he says, you know, ultimately we have to kill these fucking kids. kids. So he... Uh, like MacGyver's a bomb out of the uh, dynamite, some dynamite that, and a clock. Dynamite and a clock. Yeah. Because it's a classic. classic. Bomb. It's yeah. real classic. Looney Tunes. Love it. Yeah. I, I love, love it. Looney Tunes bomb. It's great. Bravo. It's great. I don't, I'm, someday I'm going to look up how this technology works where you can just grab an alarm clock and, and then TNT, you're going to get put on a watch list. Yeah. I know. <laughs> yeah. Right. Yeah. 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 This is what I'm hey, amazed Sean, by. You should do that while you're at work. <laughs> the town doctor do knows do how to do this. Computer. Do it. Right. It's like building a bomb. With a clock and dynamite. I was looking this up for MacGyver. I have to do a promo. Yeah. Uh, but he puts it in a suitcase and brings it in and then tries to envision a brick wall so the kids won't uh, see what is in the suitcase. Mm-hmm. Right. And then they use their super mental powers to blast through Break his brick wall, wall, but yeah. only at the last second. And then he, uh, you know, the, the bomb actually goes yeah. off. And but not before Crocodile Dundee gets her son out of there. Yeah, because we have to have the John Carpenter ending. <laughs> I don't think that's in the first one. The first one, in the original, I think everybody, the kids all die, sure. perish. I don't think that there is the fifth column in the original movie. I don't think there's the dissenter, right? I think that's new yeah, to the John Carpenter. Exist. Well, because John Carpenter's movies like do do like I mean like across the board all of them, and I'm like, Doo-doo. this is why he do nah. do. <laughs> this is why he's interested in this movie because. It is this thing about uh, the difference of individuality and the collective. Uh, yeah. Uh, mm-hmm. you yeah. Know, There's thought. a lot of examples that would prove that would agree with you. Yeah. yeah. This theory except in this one, it's kind of like the thing, except the thing has a, as a spokesperson who talks to you and explains its rationale for why it's doing what it's right. doing. And <laughs> right. you're like, okay. <laughs> this may be what I didn't need. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, because they are, they do explain a lot. The, the children when they don't shouldn't don't need to and should not yeah in yeah. this movie it's just like don't tell them that like what do you like this you, is our master plan right you represent father. yourself as evil as the children are doing mm-hmm. yet they're explaining their kind of every movement like I can't understand what you're thinking and therefore am I I am at a disadvantage I'm like shut up like don't tell your characters this you're like yeah. you're trying because they've already explained to Christopher Reeve like we've come down to this and uh, we will dominate you at some point just like yeah. well if you tell them everything you're thinking you're not going to dominate them so stop yeah mm-hmm. classic villain showing the monologuing. cards monologuing yeah, yeah monologuing. showing the cards it off. the villainous narcissism mm-hmm. which maybe don't tell them it. that you don't know what's going on maybe just yeah. be like you're thinking something <laughs> <laughs> it's nefarious I don't like it yeah <laughs> She way too much explanation <laughs> coming on from uh, Mara. Yeah, yeah. But the uh, I mean, he's trying to basically his whole thing is that they should feel some type of empathy. It was a decent <laughs> little. I mean, I thought feel something. Perform- yeah, <laughs> you should feel. <laughs> you should feel. <laughs> I've never related more. <laughs> in a movie. <laughs> when you're talking, because that's that's not specific to this movie or Alien Children. That's just talking to children. It's like you should feel something. Is this a... All uh, children are just yours. All children. I'm pretty sure all children. All, they're all psychopaths until they reach a certain sure. age. Okay. Until they learn to feel things. Mm-hmm. But I'm just wondering, when was, the womb. when was the... Uh, when, were, when were the Manson murders? 
Uh, oh, what? Okay. What? Um, well, we're talking about children. Seven, you know, it's six, like this is the sixty-nine. Yeah. Uh, okay, so that's really late. It's, this movie's very much earlier than that. I was thinking, like, what was in the mindset of like when they made the original movie? Where's this come out of? Because it's uh, a thing about you know, like the children are behaving in a way that like we can't inter- you know relate to them. You know, we're having trouble being parents with these is, is there kids. A, was there a generational thing at this point? Like what, That's what I'm wondering. Giant well, I think you're coming out of the, I mean, if you look back at the, the 50s, you had uh, 50s Rebel Without a Cause, right? It's yeah. like, so you had kids kind of uh, uh, delinquent, delinquency or whatever, right. right? And so I wonder if that wasn't, if this is some kind of metaphor for what was going on at the time with like between like. You know, it's like a parent anxiety movie. Oh, I'm sure there could be. There's definitely. Well, it, or the story, movie, right? R- sure. Any movie I think made like this where you're, you're, you're looking at like you have kids and roles and the, the parents and roles and there's that conflict. I'm sure there's always some influence in that regard to that. I yeah. think parent anxiety is a perpetual subgenre. Just like it that's will something always, pe- that's always going to exist. It will always yeah. exist. You just find new ways to like, you know. Right. But I don't know where they came out screen. of like in the movies, you know. Like the Baba Duke is like the most recent version of yeah. that, right? You yeah. know? But what's like, the earliest? There's always a version of that. Mm. Like, is it uh, something like Blackboard Jungle or Rebel Without a Cause or well, Rebel Without a Cause? You're on the other I side think of it. You say yes yeah. to all of these yeah. right? because it'll just yeah. it's just Village different Village stages of yeah. this anxiety. Um, yeah. The bad seed, bad yeah. seed going back. Well, yeah. Yes. yeah. And then I was bringing up the Manson thing because then you actually had teenagers who were killing people and doing horrible fucking things for like no mm-hmm. discernible motive. Yeah. yeah, you know. I looked it up. Sharon Tate was murdered in '69. '69. Okay. There you go. Yeah. Um, yeah. Okay. Yeah, well, that'll that's, that's, yeah that'll always be a thing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Continues to be. Mm-hmm. Let me tell you. Mm-hmm. All right. And this, the solution was kill them. There you go. There you go. <laughs> well, except for the <laughs> John Carpenter ending. Is that how ended, too? Uh, I haven't yeah, seen that movie in a long time. Uh, I'm not familiar with it. Eraserhead, that's another version of yeah, that scene. Um, yeah, that's, yeah, yeah. That's one of the... That one, yeah, that has, like, the the feeling, the nightmare of parenthood. Yeah. <laughs> it's yeah. Eraserhead. Um, night, night, you can just right stop it. Nightmare, it's nightmare, nightmare. You know, that's yeah. a good yeah, word but for that movie. Specifically, isn't it about, like, you know... No, like, yeah, it is, yeah. but... Um, just find that and movie to be a nightmare in general. Yeah. Okay. Well, is that uh, is that Village of the of the Damned? I think so. They all blow there it up is. at the end, yeah. except for David. <laughs> yep. Except for David. David is saved by Crocodile and D as uh, yeah. Holly has labeled her. Yep, it's her. And so they're gonna run off and, we'll and what? What's her plan? Like what? We're what? gonna go you somewhere know? where no one knows sequel. where we are. Yeah. Where she I got don't. A superhero <laughs> kid. <laughs> We're gonna go somewhere where no one knows us, and we can make a sequel. Mm-hmm. Great, this, great. You know, She's like, going to expose her child to more people. Great fucking move. Again, this should be an internationally... Is she going to dye his hair? Like, this should be an internationally known... Or at least a nationally known story. Yeah. Issue how... Like... Especially if they all get blown up and they can't account for one of the children. Mm-hmm. Like, okay, something's going to happen here. Like... I'm is curious a, as the rest of the story. Is it a hopeful movie that she's somehow going to imprint uh, humanity on him because he's showing signs of it already? And yeah. the so way the kid becoming... reacts in the final shot, no, no. <laughs> hopeful yeah. at all. That no. kid is going to murder. Well, that's what I'm people. saying. That's the way John Carpenter <laughs> stuff ends. Yeah. Is like. The hopelessness of like, fuck. Yeah, yeah, where do we go? <laughs> even yeah. even if we thought that was possible, is it worth the risk? You know what I'm saying? Like maybe err on the side of caution with yeah, that shit. You know. But it really does end with a right. If if Carpenter put no other imprint on the rest of this movie, was the yeah. ending, ending yeah. is <laughs> definitely moment, yeah. She, yeah. she literally like let the outbreak monkey out of its cage yeah. and just was like, be free. Uh-huh. You know, yeah, that's what she just did. Yeah. yeah, she yeah. did. Yep. She did. Yeah. Well, there you oh, go. There there's you. the sequel. There's so the, the movie's sequel. basically saying that the the emotion is actually like the, the your downfall is uh, okay. All right. She well. was right. Mm-hmm. Yep. Shit. Uh, so I tell you what, listener, we have an epic super deluxe mailbag tonight. Ooh. So How we many hope- pages, Colin. Three, three Many pages. pages. Of, yeah. <laughs> wow, so, it's a whole on book we got. I know here. we got a full book of mailbag, so we want to thank you. <laughs> I'm not, I'm not going to drink that one. Hey, hey, we're kind of doing something here, Sean. <laughs> I want to. That's it's not my fault. Well, maybe Sean can uh, help us out and summon huh? our mailman, Igor. Igor, bring us the mail. 
Masters! Masters, the mail! I've got the mail. So many letters. Our followers are rising. Rising. Thank you, Igor. He's got a real bad wig on tonight, just like the fucking wigs in this movie. Squeaky wig. Bad. It's kind of White. coming on him, though. <laughs> White I party was, city shake and go wigs, man. I was really hoping that he you would like, have... What's um, his name from... Uh, oh, who, who, who what? did... Uh, oh, what? Fuck, who did the Frankenstein, oh, uh, Frankenstein song? Um, Boris Pickett. No, never mind. Okay, Monster Mash. Someone will know what you're talking about, Sean. No, there's... Hold on, I'm gonna look this up. You were hoping it makes what? sense. <laughs> I was really hoping since we had an extra large mailbag that you'd have an extra long piece of paper. I know. Oh, it's I was not thinking like about paper. Yeah, you go for once and it was great. <laughs> yeah. Then it should be the scroll. Yeah. Instead, it's 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 a mini pamphlet at this point. It is. Point, you know? So this is going to, yeah. Jesus. And again, Bear thank, with us, you, thank you, thoughts. thank you for writing in. We appreciate it. Yeah. We, we do. It. This is my favorite part. Um, yeah. I'm, so, I'm over the moon that we have this much stuff people want to tell us i know it's awesome i still can't believe that people actually are listening to us but <laughs> uh, i can't either um yeah. so uh, let me ask you this how can they get a hold of us on facebook facebook.com slash saturday freak show what about on twitter at sat freak show by email saturday night freak show at yahoo.com would you be surprised to know that we got like at least three yeah we get emails? Yeah. Oh, my God. I and, love it. That's like and, getting snail mail at this point. I know. know. I love it. But thank you. And uh, by Instagram <laughs> at Saturday Night Freak Show. So the first message comes from HP. I'm going to cry. He wrote in on Twitter. Harry Potter? Hewlett Packard. And Hewlett says, Packard. The reason I'm writing in is I just oh. want to express my gratitude to you four for putting on so many great shows. With working nights and working in law enforcement, things can get pretty depressing and boring at times, so your show is always a source of entertainment and creates a happy, positive feeling. On the slow nights when there is no crime, I tend to listen to your older episodes I missed, and sometimes me and a few of the other officers will discuss a topic you just had, which is a fun diversion compared to the typical conversations that we have, especially if it's educating someone about canon films or arguing over who won in Freddy vs. Jason. <laughs> So he also says, I will also listen with my girlfriend, who I'm slowly introducing to horror, to episodes on movies we've recently watched, which, I, which I've noticed is making her appreciate the genre more. And I can also tell she enjoys listening to you more and more. The reason I mention all this is because you deserve to know the fun you create and that you all do a great job. So thank you for putting out so many great fun shows. And with the approaching milestone show coming up, figured you deserved an appreciation email. I'm sure many other listeners will agree with. Thanks again for a great show. God damn, uh, who's cutting who, onions who in your you? head? Who are you? <laughs> Hewlett. <laughs> who's, I can't. Oh my God. There's, there's a lot to unpack I'm going to try Jesus. and I will go look for this comment Jesus. and read it again. Yeah, I don't, it's great. But I can't. Well, that was a, an email, so I'll have to forward. Yeah, forward yeah. the email oh because I can't. I'm going to say this again. I can't accept. I don't know what it is. And again, I'm the broken one. I know. Well, Sean no, has I, a mental I, well, block here, and can't here's, believe here's anybody's listening. So, to like, I can't I, accept these things. I think I speak for all of us when I say that, like, we all listen to podcasts, and I know that when I listen to the podcasts I listen to, I believe those people are my friends. Sure, and I just yes. I just tell my oh, fiance yeah, all course. the time like they're my best friends they just don't know like they yeah, just don't right. know that we're they friends just yeah. Met yeah. Me yet. yeah yeah and like so we're all to best friends to be on the other side of that is something I never expected to ever feel in my I'm entire say it's life literally so. unbelievable yeah if you didn't get it from our gushing thank you yeah Jesus yeah, thank Christ you man very thank much. you we all had to stop looking it. at each other for a minute because <laughs> yeah. we were all tearing up at the same time very much we were we love you for listening thank you so much punk rock AJ writes in and says I have fallen in absolute love with your podcast i really enjoy the nitty-gritty film discussion you guys have as well as your splendid humor and camaraderie best podcast of all time that's so sweet you guys you all keep topping each other you can't do that (laughs) you can't this is too much love for us to accept yeah we can't do this all in one night i love you so much (laughs) thank you very much for writing in thank you we appreciate it well then we settle into the movie portion of our uh, (laughs) specifics feedback so about (laughs) village of the damned yes uh wayne lustick writes in and says i just watched this again a couple weeks ago it's still creepy it uh, is creepy. Sure. It is creepy. Yeah. The kids. Yeah. I mean, kids in any. I mean, yeah, yeah. right. You know. Kids with blonde wigs is creepy. Yeah. Yeah. Little alien kids. Yeah. Yes. They all totally. dress the same and walk in rows together. Yeah. It's weird. Thanks, Wayne. Yeah. 
Uh, Grant Parrish writes in and says, I had seen this one when I was younger. It seemed to come on TV a lot. I recently bought the original one with George Sanders. I can't quite explain it, but I sort of missed Kirstie Alley's blatant superiority. I am sure I am misremembering the 90s version, but she has that speech with Reeves about building walls in her mind, which always yeah. translated to, you stupid man, you can't fight alien babies with your penis. And I dig that. <laughs> I remember reading this. That's a good one. <laughs> <laughs> That's amazing. That a <laughs> Blatant really superiority is a really good way to describe yes. her. Yeah. That's a good one. I uh, love that. that. Uh, William Douglas writes in and says, I got to see John Carpenter live last year and performed this theme. Definitely made me want to give it a rewatch. It's been at least 18 years since the yeah. last time I saw it. This is definitely in the era where I fell off the John Carpenter train. Mm. Don't get me wrong. I'm a massive fan, but his later work didn't resonate with me. Thanks for, yeah, it's good to hear from that, him yeah. again. Yeah. 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 Good to hear from you again. Uh, I, 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 like what, was he just strumming on a guitar, like on stage by himself when he was doing the theme? I, uh, he like, does the, the march of the, I think okay. it's, it might be be on one of the lost themes or it's like a b-side or something i'm yeah. not gonna lie if i was at that concert fun. that's when i would be going to the bathroom like, like that's when i'd be like oh time to go get a beer and not be right here right now well jacob <laughs> cotner writes in and says uh this movie gets better every time i see it i saw it in the theater and i enjoyed it then on video after reeves injury and that pretty that's pretty much all i thought about it while i was watching it mm. years later i revisited the film a few times but didn't fully appreciate it until the scream factory blu-ray release this film is very well shot and full of atmosphere the kids are all very competent especially Lindsay hahn as mara what right. an amazing performance don't get me wrong i still see flaws in the film the adults aren't as good as the kids but it's still a classic I'm loving the show guys thank you for what you do no oh, thanks oh, that's man so sweet that's really nice and we're digging uh <laughs> refund theater too so i'm really appreciating uh, you guys' on, like on. well thought out responses yeah like, well sean roger writes in Oh, what up? Sean. And he says, Sean? Uh, Sean. I love Village of the Damned when I first saw it. It hasn't held up very well for me, though. I think the girl yeah. who played Mara was, pre Mara was pretty Mara. creepy and did a decent job. And I'm surprised Christy Alley didn't have a cigarette in her mouth when she was delivering the stillborn right? baby because she did in she pretty much have. every the, other scene. She was smoking in a hospital. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. And every, and the, so it's yeah. the 90s, man. You can smoke everywhere. But that's what I'm saying. If you're smoking in a hospital, what does it matter if you smoke in a barn? Right. Mm -hmm. uh, zombie brand says even though this is past Carpenter's Prime I think this is still a really solid movie the kids are great especially the head bitch Mara more importantly <laughs> this is Christy Alley's third best performance after Drop Dead Gorgeous and It Takes Two yes <laughs> yes even though the original is, by all accounts, a better movie, I revisit this one way more often. It's fun, harmless time. Three toe-head alien children out of five. Uh, <laughs> oh, my he God. Stole, he stole my rating system. I was going to use this. I was going to say, like, three platinum wigs out of five. <laughs> I, mole that smartest? <laughs> the mole smartest. Oh, God, I love it. That movie's That's hilarious. Very good. I've never seen it. Oh, uh, it's, so, it's wonderful. Colin, you'd hate it. About, uh, <laughs> yeah, it's, not, it's not your thing, Colin. So last week, we watched 10 to Midnight. Novato uh, Judoka writes in and says this has been more like the summer of Colin rather than the summer of Canon. That's true. Yeah, it has because Colin crushed true. it all summer. He had hits. crushed it. Hit after hit after hit. This is Johnny New Jersey. Yes. Hit after hit. That's all going to change man. next time. Uh, <laughs> yeah, we're out of the summer. We're into the fall. Callan's going to hit a real steep drop. Right? That's right. I think, I think this is my time. I think I'm about to. Is it? <laughs> the fall is it your time to shine? I'm pretty sure. I think so. It's like all summer we were going up the do roller coaster. Do you fancy yourself in autumn? Drop right down. <laughs> we do. Well, also uh, Rogerio. I hope I'm saying your name right. Barbosa says regarding Bronson, his best so you films. Captain the ship. Are uh, mm. Hard Times, Death Wish, some of his canon films, Once Upon a Time in the West, The yep. Dirty Dozen, yep. The Great yep. Escape, yep. Mr. Majestic, Great. Breakout, yep. Yep. Violent City, Cold Sweat, and The Evil That Men Do. Those all have great titles. Yeah. Yeah. He's Man. seen a lot of jokes. What's some solid, did, solid titles? Did he choose work just based on the title? I think so. <laughs> he may have. Well, about our episode on The Thing 2011. Uh, Gary mm -hmm. Gilstrap mm -hmm. writes in and says, I'm a massive <laughs> fan of John Carpenter's like The Thing. <laughs> so I knew I would hate this movie going in. I knew it would be nothing more than a ripoff of the original. I was wrong. It was so much worse. Uh, it's pretty it much a beat for beat remake minus everything that made the original great. That's all caps. Mm -hmm. I don't know what's worse. The fact that younger people will think this is the only movie called The Thing Ugh. or younger people will think this is the best version of The Thing. I fucking hate 2018. 
You nailed it, Gilstrap. Yep, you nailed it. Yeah, yep. I don't think anybody who knows that this movie is the thing doesn't know that there is an other thing by John Carpenter. Mm-hmm. Can can you know that? Can you know that the that the 2011 movie exists without knowing no. that other movies exist? I don't think anything's possible. <laughs> Brent Zemecki writes in. And he says, John Carpenter's The Thing is an absolute masterpiece with incredible effects, paranoia, and setting. It's my all-time favorite horror film, so I was there opening night for the prequel. Your review sums up my feelings for that piece of crap perfectly. (laughs) It's an insult to John Carpenter. Yeah. It kind of is, yeah. 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 I I was there with you, man. I was like, I'm I'm more thing, give me more. And then I was was like, why? And then you decided to do this to it? And then I was like, my hubris for thinking there could be more and it would still be good. Like, I, I put so all the addition. blame on myself of being like, I should have known that like, you can't couldn't fuck happen. with perfection. Yeah. <laughs> well, Robin Lineman Silverberg writes oh, in and says, uh, so this might be a little long, so bear with me. Okay. I remember this like I'm it was last ride. week. Yeah. I saw the original John Carpenter version of the thing in a sneak preview in Denver in the spring of 1982. Carpenter was there, along with a bunch of studio executives and other bigwigs from Hollywood. We saw it in a 70 millimeter presentation. I'm sure it was in Dolby. I had an older couple sitting to my left and three army guys in uniform on my right. We had no idea what we were in for. By the end of the movie, my left shoulder was aching from the older lady clinging to me, and my right hand was numb because the army guy sitting next to me was gripping my arm so tight. It was one of the best movie experiences of my life. All that preamble was for this. I, when I heard they were making a sequel, prequel, I was so excited I could hardly stand it. I was so disappointed that I have never seen it again and preferred just to imagine what happened in the Norwegian camp and forget that this even exists. All those feelings are correct. You talk about these experiences you had and everything. My dad always tells a story about how he took my mom to go see Halloween and mm-hmm. how she was, the, the crowd reaction, how she was hiding mm-hmm. during the whole movie. And yeah. it's, you know, it's things like that that add to the experience of watching these movies and, you know, kind of the history of them. And so I, I appreciate the yeah. story that you shared with those us. Those are the love re- stories like, like that's that. That's the stuff yeah. I love, to those, hear other people's experiences yeah, with this stuff. Those reactions are what I think... Those dire- are great. I think that's what directors are hoping for yeah. when mm-hmm. their movies come out. That's yeah. exactly what that's they the want. That's It's, it's great. Me. Yeah. So I appreciate when you share the stuff with us, because I love mm-hmm. it. That's great. Well, about the Meg... Tony Genoway writes in and says, I grew up shortboarding on the beaches above Sydney where we had shark nets, which didn't always stop big schools of them breaking through and taking over the waters at times. Awesome. Sure. (laughs) Well, he says, uh, we saw Jaws 2 on the big screen when I was about 15 and went surfing at dawn the next day, so I have dug these flicks in a morbid way for (laughs) decades. I went to see The Meg on IMAX just for the spectacle, and it was okay, but as a cohesive movie, it was pretty crap. Agreed. Jonas mentioned Su Yin's dad was in a bad way when they were in the dinghy and he said he was bleeding internally so his dying right. was explained yeah like, like i said uh, yeah. couldn't hear anything any of the dialogue in this movie for how it was mixed or whatever so didn't didn't hear that but <laughs> yeah but like just somebody got fucked up somehow but he also I, says entertaining show enter, entertaining show as usual usual cheers so that brings us thank you all wow. again you for writing all. in that was a wow. very full mail amazing bag. how amazing was that Woo. fantastic that was epic bag. epic mailbag that was awesome thanks Igor for lugging that big yeah. sack of mail over here <laughs> he's gonna here. have some serious guns after that man appreciate yeah. it but the show's not over yet no that's right now we're gonna go around the room and give you our would we recommend John Carpenter's Village of the Damned Colin Colin, what did you think of John Carpenter's? Because it says it in the title. Yeah. John Carpenter's Village of the Damned. You know how many movies don't say John Carpenter's in that how are made many, by Colin? John Carpenter? How many? I'm curious. I'm not entirely sure. But Neither I know. Uh, the thing Neither doesn't. And, uh, no, it does. At the beginning? Uh, It, it might at the beginning. The but if you take a poster to him that says that, he will get very mad. Oh, if it says John Carpenter's yes. on it, yes. Oh, he does not because like just because thing. it's oh, technically it, a remake, so it's not his. It's oh. not. And it doesn't not show up in the title. Story, either. Yeah. yeah, and, and the, the title card says John Carpenter's, the th- and then the thing burns through the screen. Does it? Oh yeah. Well, don't. I, don't go, I think it's memoirs. Pro advice, of an guys: don't take a poster man. to him and get mad. Okay. Memoirs of an Invisible Man does not, and I think perhaps yeah. Big Trouble in Little China on the. I've never remembered it. Not Having it. Um. You watch Invisible Man. So, having said that John Carpenter is like my spirit animal, right? I'm about to shit on this movie. I'm about to shit on this movie. Yeah. Um, 
I remember seeing it. I remember, you know, I mean, I saw all of John Carpenter's movies in the theater. The one that I was like, I'm fucking done. I'm over. This is it. <laughs> was a ghost of Mars. Oh yeah. Which was the last yeah, one that I saw in the theater. Right? Yeah. And yeah. Just, oh, that was it, fucking wait, awful. Mm-hmm. That movie as well? yes, it's yeah. a terrible, terrible movie, which was just like, I could not believe, you know, that this guy who made all these movies that shaped, you know, I think helped shape the horror and science fiction genres. Like, you know, when he was in his prime. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I think maybe he had so many ideas and he ran out of them and then you can just kind of feel it. The fire's not there. And there's, it's not to say people that, wanting him to make movies and he's just like, well, it's possible. This? It's possible. It's like, I don't know. Cause I mean, it you feels know, like I filmmakers listened. would get to that point where people want you to make movies. You're just like, I have nothing left. Yeah, or he wants to make westerns. You know, I yeah. mean, like he's and a big western Wes fan, right, and nobody else yeah. wants to make that. Yeah, and they just don't want you. Like, they just won't fund it if you want yeah. to do those kind of things. And so he gets pigeonholed as like he's a horror and science fiction. But it's weird that like he makes these like um, these genre fantasy genre movies, fantasy horror movies, or whatever. That's like. You know, few people even get an opportunity to make them. And I don't know if it's a good thing that, you know, that 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 even he got to make them. I mean, you know, later on. <laughs> um, but, you know, I just listened to the commentary for In the Mouth of Madness, the Scream Factory, when they, and he said, well, you know, I was talking about how he was proud of that movie. But I mean, even that one, I was kind of like, I like the concept more than the execution yeah, the of that execution's movie. Yeah, not great in that movie. Like, nothing in the 90s, really, that he did, I would say, is, like, a favorite of mine. Um, and then, you know, what, I can't remember if Ghost of Mars was 2000s or if that was... I think it's 2001. Okay, so, yeah, yeah. then it's over, you know? So, yeah. basically, up until, I think, like, the last good John Carpenter movie is probably, I can't remember which one came first, but it's, like, they live were a prince of darkness. And then like, once you get out of that, uh, am I forgetting that's something it. that comes after so. that? I don't think so. Like that's at the tail end. The last so. really good one is probably 1986. And that was uh, big trouble in little China. Mm-hmm. And then it's like, you get these two afterwards and then it's like the slope and then you can watch in the mouth of madness, but it's not like, I wouldn't tell a person who wasn't, a genre fan right. to watch a genre it. or carpenter fan yeah, to and, go watch that. But movie. that's, that's yeah. the kind of the grade that I'm, I have here tonight. Yeah. Right. Cause there are like all the other earlier John Carpenter things. Like, I don't care if you like horror movies or not, you should see Christine. Christine's good. Yeah. Starman's good. Assault on Priest Think 13 is good. Escape from New York. I mean, I'll just keep going. The fog. I mean, they're all yeah. like, Certain these are things. really good movies. And then, it's like, man, you could watch Prince of Darkness. That's some copy. You could watch They Live. You know, it's like They Live more than Prince of Darkness. And then after time. that, it's like. Well, you, you can know. watch They Live. You should watch. You should I, I, you watch, should they, watch live. they Live. Yeah. Is how I feel. Yeah. Right. I, I, also, yeah. I also feel like, should you watch They Live? We did an okay, episode you should on watch that, it, too. But it's a second screener. Like, you can second screen the shit out of that movie. You can be on your phone doing whatever the fuck it's else again, you want It's movie. another movie that I think the concept is so strong. That's why you're saying you should watch Watch it more than the actual like the execution, execution of it. Is not- because the, the there's no money there in like the 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 vision for that movie it outstrips the what he was able to do yeah. and you can feel it at the end of They Live it's like oh fuck this is kind of embarrassing because you like, don't have you enough you don't need to watch that I watched yeah. every election day well there you go um, so makes Village- sense if you think about yeah. it guys. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, but Village of the Damned was a movie that uh, I just remember coming out of it. I mean, I had the exact experience. Well, tonight it was boring. Uh, when yeah. I saw it originally, it was uh, it had no highs and no lows. It was just kind of here's a movie that flatlines the entire way through it. It's not bad and it's not good and it's just kind of there. And you know, mm-hmm. you don't need to waste your time on a Village of the Damned. And I don't remember the original well enough to give you advice one way or the other. So. Unfortunately, yeah, I know. I know it's like sacrilege, but this is not uh, Carpenter's finest hour. He even admits it, so I would say you could probably skip this film. Holly, what'd you think? Um, yeah, no, I I, I agree with you. Um, I'm I kind of just even completely separate this from John Carpenter in general. Like I don't even really 
I just kind of take him out of the equation when it's looking not at this. There to no, well, yeah, like, this is John Carpenter. Yeah, well, like when looking at this movie and examining it, I just kind of take him out of the equation. I'm like, he's kind of irrelevant at this point. Like the fact he, that his name is over the title, in it this means movie, nothing. It's just like, I, it, should it be? Yeah, it Doesn't means feel like it, it means nothing to me. So like, just to, I mean, we've talked about John Carpenter at length, but just this movie in general, it's it, it is a boring movie. Um, I actually, I saw this a long time ago, and then I just happened to pick it. It was like $2 at Disc Replay or something, so I picked it up. So I watched it, like, maybe, I don't know, six months ago. And I was like, oh, maybe this is a freak show. Maybe I'll revisit it. And I was like, oh, this is boring as fuck. <laughs> <laughs> that's then why, the day comes. That's why I never brought it. So then last week, Sean's like, I'm doing Village of the Day. I'm like, oh, that's going to be fun. I <laughs> <laughs> thought. Oh. <laughs> but it's fine. It's fine. I, we've, I've, we've, yeah, we've done movies that I've hated a lot more. Like I completely agree with you where you say it's not good, it's it's not great, it's not bad, it's just kind of meh. That's spot on. It's it's boring. I mean, yeah, the kids are creepy. There there are parts that I found somewhat interesting, but it's definitely not something to just go out of your way to watch. There's really there's really nothing to it. There's nothing special about it. There are plenty of movies that have similar themes that are way better, and I just I I don't think you should really waste your time on it. So I'm gonna pass on Village of the Damned. Michaela, this movie's boring as all hell, <laughs> yeah. and it's completely forgettable. Like this movie is so fucking forgettable. Uh, I just th- like it, it feels like a TV movie in its production value and its pace and its 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 length. Like I don't understand why this movie is as long as it is. It felt like it was three hours when we were watching. It's it. only Holy like an shit. hour and thirty nine minutes. I do not believe longer. you. I don't yeah, fucking a, believe you because it felt quote unquote, so a long. Quick movie. Um, if you told me this was like a double feature with the Langoliers, I was like, yeah, sure. Sounds about right. Cause that's another super slow made for TV horror movie. That is just like nothing. Cool premise. Nothing happens. Um, I, I do think John Carpenter is one of the greatest filmmakers of all time. It's a shame is that he's attached to this in any way, but at least he owns the facts that he doesn't give a shit. So mm-hmm. that I, I think I've seen less John Carpenter movies than I haven't seen, if that makes sense. Like, I've seen all the important ones, I feel like, and then I stopped because I was like, why ruin a good thing was kind of my thought. So... Um, and it's pretty identifiable like, yeah. what is like this is a Carpenter movie and you should see this right. versus what yeah. is not. I right. feel like I'm right there with you. It's a lot. Yeah. And I'm I not agree. really feeling encouraged to see the rest of them at this point. Well, so. you, hadn't, you hadn't seen this tonight. No. This is my right, first yeah. time watching it and now I'm like, no, fuck this. I'm, yeah. <laughs> fucking not done. A, a good advertisement so, for no, other no. Carpenter movies you no. have not seen. Yeah. No. No. No, I'm telling you, like everything before 1986 and before, you got to yeah. see every single one of them. Yeah. yeah, except maybe Which I Dark feel like Star. I probably have at this point. <laughs> yeah, I mean, what year was Starman? Yeah, eighty three. No, I've not. 84? That's probably the one I haven't seen. I haven't that's seen a good movie. Either, yeah, mm-hmm. that's a good movie. I, I, haven't, I haven't seen, seen most it. of Starman. Yeah. But yeah, no, fuck this movie. Don't recommend it. It's boring as all hell. Uh, uh, you'll fall asleep and then wake up and be like, wait, but this doesn't make sense. But it doesn't matter because if you had been awake, it wouldn't make sense either. So <laughs> yeah. yeah, hard pass on this, Sean. Uh, it's uh, it's all very true. <laughs> <laughs> it's true, all of it. It's true, all, all of it. it. Yeah. Mark Hamill. To quote Harry, no, to quote Harry Ford. Yeah, yeah. It's yeah. like it's true. It's true. All, all of it. it. Yeah. <laughs> um, I mean, Carpenter said himself he didn't have much passion for this project, and I I feel like it it comes through uh, unless you look at the like the last maybe ten minutes of this movie. But uh, again, it's not enough to redeem this movie. Um, it is. It's slow. Um, it does feel like the Lifetime version of a John Carpenter movie, so um, uh, I'm not here for it. I haven't watched this movie in so long. I remember it being um, a really like cool, creepy movie when I was a kid. Just because, exactly, yeah, right. Yeah. When I was a kid, because you're just like, oh, there's a bunch of kids and their eyes glow and they make kid the adults do. Anytime shit. Anytime the kids are the bad guys, when you're a right. kid, you're that's like, the yeah. shit. You're like, yes, fuck adults. Yeah, yeah. Make them jump off that cliff. <laughs> but uh, I, I'll tell you, at uh, 32, it does not hold up at all. Yeah. It is the it's the slowest version of a John Carpenter movie you can watch. Um, uh, it's not. There's no identifiable character. It, it could be dismissed as like, is this a Carpenter movie? I don't know. It could be dismissed as not being because there's nothing I really identifiable that makes this uh, a Carpenter movie. And if nothing else, it doesn't make it a Carpenter movie. You should watch. 
So, um, yeah, I, 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 I pass on Village of the Damned. Today, this was the definitive deciding how you feel about a movie. Watch <laughs> of a movie. And Village of the Damned does not make the cut. You might change your mind in 20 years. I don't think so. Because uh, it'll be worse. It's not a good movie. It'll be worse. <laughs> right. Yeah, if this is not enough to excite me now, 20 years, yeah. Yeah. I'm going to be more of a curmudgeon in 20 years. I'm going to be like, ah, fuck this movie. So uh, I'm going to say no. So you will not be picking up these screen. I will not. Uh, I always thought about it. It was a thing. I'm just like, do I need to go back and pick up like the better version of this movie with special features and everything? It's like, I do not. Mm. So I'm going to say uh, probably a hard pass in Village of the Damned. I'm glad I got to watch it tonight to, to finally decide my feelings, but it is a hard pass. Uh, I, I know my feelings about this movie, and I'm done. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. no more Village of the Damned. Mm-hmm. All right. There well, that's uh, no more Village of the Dam. That's a freak show pass from four of us, so you don't have to watch it because we did it for you. So uh, next week, we hope you'll join us as we watch a movie that's chosen by Holly. Holly, what are we watching next week? Well, oh, <laughs> <laughs> well, John's O was oh, very there telling. Oh. There is a gentleman on the oh. Freak Show Hall of Fame. Oh no, that, uh, Tom that, Atkins that. <laughs> we just John Claude Van Dam. We just need to revisit him every so often. Oh, Tom Atkins. Oh. <laughs> and, uh, I would say I would argue he's like he's got the most stars. Next I think he's season, got right? the, I think he's got the most stars. We're gonna cool off with Sly. Oh, and we're gonna watch Cliffhanger. Oh, yeah! Yeah. <laughs> yeah. There's no such thing as too much Stallone. Right? Oh, I agree. Yeah. I'm so excited. <laughs> <laughs> well, then that means you'll have to tune in next week as we watch Cliffhanger on the Saturday Night Freak Show. And until then, ladies and germs, the basement is going dark. <laughs>